Getting a divorce in Tennessee is actually simpler than you might think. The spouse seeking a divorce must have been a resident of Tennessee when the grounds for divorce arose. If the grounds for divorce arose outside of Tennessee and the petitioner resided outside of Tennessee, either spouse must have been a resident for six months prior to filing. The divorce may be filed in any of the following. The county in which both spouses lived at the time of their separation. The county in which the respondent lives if he or she is a resident of Tennessee or the county in which the petitioner lives if the respondent is a non-resident of Tennessee. Once the residency requirement is completed, a legal grounds for a divorce must be established. In Tennessee, both general and no-fault divorce are acceptable for divorce. The reasons for a no-fault divorce are irreconcilable differences if there has been no denial of this ground, the spouses submit a properly signed marital dissolution agreement. This grounds for divorce is combined with a general fault-based grounds or living separate and apart without cohabitation for two years when there are no minor children. General reasons for divorce include impotence, adultery, conviction of a felony and imprisonment, alcoholism and or drug addiction, Wife is pregnant by another at the time of marriage without husband's knowledge. Willful desertion for one year. Bigamy. Endangering the life of the spouse. Conviction of an infamous crime. Refusing to move to Tennessee with a spouse and willfully absenting oneself from a new residence for two years. Cruel and inhuman treatment or unsafe and improper marital conduct indignities that make the spouse's life intolerable, and abandonment, neglect, or banning the spouse from the home. Tennessee requires a parenting plan for child custody. Joint or sole custody is based on the best interests of the child and the child's preference. Joint custody is presumed to be in the best interests of the child when the parents agree to it or agree in open court to joint custody. Neither parent is more suited for custody than the other. Custody is also granted based on the following. The love, affection, and emotional ties between the parents and child. The importance of continuity and the length of time the child has lived in a stable and satisfactory environment unless parent disrupted continuity by fleeing domestic violence. Whether there has been any domestic violence or physical or mental abuse to the child, spouse, or any other person, and whether a parent has had to relocate to avoid such violence. The stability of the family unit. The mental and physical health of the parents. The home, school, and community record of the child. The reasonable preference of a child over 12 years of age the character and behavior of any person who lives in or visits the parent's home and such person's interactions with the child and each parent's past and potential performance of parenting duties including a willingness and ability to facilitate and encourage a close and continuing parent-child relationship with the other parent. Either or both parents may be ordered to provide child support. The court may require that health insurance coverage be provided, or that the spouse to who pays the support maintain a life insurance policy for the benefit of the child. In addition, the court can require the child support payments be paid through the court clerk. Posting of bond, wage assignments, and wage withholding may also be ordered. There are official child support guidelines in the Rules of Tennessee Department of Human Services Child Support Division, which are presumed correct unless the amount would be unjust or inappropriate under the circumstances of the case. Standardized forms for determining child support are also available. Tennessee is an equitable distribution state. The separate property of each spouse is retained by that spouse. Separate property is property that was acquired prior to marriage, by gift or inheritance, in exchange for any separate property or obtained from income or appreciation of separate property if the other spouse did not contribute to the preservation and appreciation. The court may award the home and goods to the spouse with physical custody. 
The marital property includes any property acquired during the marriage by either spouse, an increase in value of any property to which the spouse has contributed to the upkeep and depreciation, and any retirement benefits is divided by the court without regard to any marital fault and after a consideration of the following factors. The contribution of each spouse to the acquisition, preservation, appreciation, or dissipation of the marital property, including the contribution of each spouse as homemaker, wage earner, or parent. The value of each spouse's property at the time of the marriage and at present. The economic circumstances of each spouse at the time the division of property is to become effective. The length of the marriage. The age and health of the spouses the vocational skills of the spouses, the liabilities and needs of each spouse and the opportunity of each for further acquisition of capital assets and income, the federal income tax consequences of the court's division of the property, the present and potential earning capability of each spouse, the tangible and intangible contributions made by one spouse to the education, training or increased earning power of the other spouse, the relative ability of each party for the future acquisition of capital and income, the employability and earning capacity of the spouses, any social security benefits, and any other factors necessary to do equity and justice between the spouses. Spousal support may be a lump sum, periodic, or rehabilitative support. Tennessee favors rehabilitative support, However, if this is not feasible, the court may grant long-term alimony until the death or remarriage of the supported spouse. Spousal support may be awarded to either spouse based on the following. The value of any separate property and the value of the spouse's share of any marital property. Whether the spouse seeking alimony is the custodian of a child whose circumstances make it appropriate for that spouse not to seek outside employment the need for sufficient education and training to enable the spouse to find appropriate employment, the standard of living during the marriage, the duration of the marriage, the comparative financial resources of the spouses, including their comparative earning abilities in the labor market and any retirement, pension, or profit-sharing benefits, the needs and obligations of each spouse, the tangible and intangible contributions of each spouse to the marriage, including services rendered in homemaking, child care, and contributions to the education, earning capacity, and career building of the other spouse. The relative education and training of the spouses and the opportunity of each party to secure education and training. The age of the spouses, the physical and mental condition of the spouse, the tax consequences to each spouse, the vocational skills and employability of the spouse seeking alimony, the conduct of the spouses during the marriage, and any other factor the court deems just and equitable. The court may require spousal support payments be made through the court clerk. Spousal support payments may include expenses of job training and education. Upon request, the court may delay a divorce proceeding to allow an attempt at reconciliation. In cases which involve child custody, the court may order either or both parents to a seminar concerning the effects of divorce on children. Visit us today at www.mydivorcepapers.com and click on Tennessee at the bottom of the page. Let mydivorcepapers.com help you file for divorce today.